There's tons of striker fire pistol options on the market. A ton of companies make some for competition use, duty use, self-defense, and just plain range toys. I have three pistols here in front of me that are all very popular. We're gonna start out, we'll go through all of them. I'm gonna talk subjectively and a little bit objectively about all of them and give you guys some things that a lot of people won't talk about with some of these pistols. And I can't quite understand why they won't talk about some of the issues behind each one of these pistols, essentially. New to the market, we have the Shadow Systems DR920L. This pistol has just debuted. It comes out as basically a Glock 34 length pistol with your long slide, long barrel and no lightning cut on the top like you saw with the Glock 34, but it comes out with all the upgrades that somebody would do to a Glock 34 to ultimately make it competition ready, except it only costs you a couple hundred dollars more than a Glock 34 MOS would. These pistols are somewhere around $1,000. A MOS Glock 34 is about $700, which they need a new trigger, they need a magwell, and they need new sights right off the bat if you're gonna shoot any competition with them. In addition to that, they also need some of those items if you're used for duty use also. This pistol has all those. It has the trigger, the sights, Magwell and not an optics cut on there and much better slide serrations. Comes with two magazines, Magpul P Mag ones on there. They seem to work fine. I don't personally have any issues with those. I have seen some people talk about how much they hate these magazines. Again, I can't speak to any issues myself. The SIG X5 Legion. This pistol is hands down the most popular striker fired option for competition shooting for a lot of reasons. It lends itself very nicely to be a good competition pistol. Has an ultra smooth slide has good slide serrations on there, lightning cuts across the top, adjustable rear sight with an optics plate you can remove to put a Delta Point Pro on there or SIG sight, then also your fiber optic front. Good grip texturing, magwell on here, which we'll talk about that part here shortly, a good trigger on there. And then you have on here also, with the guide on here, it's like a 1911 style, which lends this pistol to also be very, very smooth. With the SIG X5 Legion, what truly sets it apart from a lot of the other ones is that it is a very heavy pistol. That is due to the tungsten infused grip module that these 320s use, and in particular this model. So this pistol, without a doubt, is almost twice as heavy as the Shadow Systems. But that's a good thing when you're talking about competition because it helps out a lot with recoil based stuff. They do come with three magazines. They are good magazines. They don't interface well with that magwell, but we'll talk about that here shortly. Let's go into the Canic. This is quite possibly the best value out of all three pistols on this table. It is truly a great pistol that does not get the recognition it deserves. They shoot great and they have awesome triggers and quality wise, they seem like they are really good. They're not quite have the track record as the other two because they're a little bit newer to the market. However, a lot of great features and there's some things on here too that I don't like, which we'll get into. The trigger on here is flat faced, easily the best trigger fire trigger on the market. They have good sights on here with a red fiber optic front, a notch rear that's adjustable with an optics plate that's built into the rear sight, which I can't stand, but it has a nice magwell on here, nice oversized controls that are easy to reach and easy to get, and then two nice 18 round magazines that come with it with base pads that interface really well with the magwell. So since we're on the magwell topic, we're gonna to start off with the SIG. This review in general, going over these two pistols is not meant to bash. However, my concern is that with the SIG magwell and the Legion magazines, they sit completely flush. When I think about that and when I use this pistol, it's obviously the least easiest pistol out of the three to relo reload, even though it has the largest magazine well on it. Whoever came up and thought that let's use these base pads with this magazine well on here and let's make it flush has never shot competition ever a day in their life. However, then the competition, whether it be the shadow systems or the Canic, will start the shadow systems when they take their Magpul magazines or even the Glock ones, when you put them in there with like a 19 round 19X mag, and you put them in there, they do stick out, they do not sit flush, and they go in very, very easily. No issue with that. The Canic, the same concept, okay? They go in there, they interface well, they stick out a little bit so they're not flush. So when you're going in there and you're doing your reload, very, very easy to do as well. And that's where the Legion falls short, is truly in its mag. They give you three, however, the base pads that come with them are nice, they just don't interface with the mag well very well. What I don't like in particular about the Canic is that the sight plate system they use for this and the plates they use for optics mounting, I'm not really sure what they were thinking when they did this, okay? Because the way that it goes on here and the huge plates that they use, they don't seem like they're of the best quality. I've never seen any issues in some of the pistols I've used that use those plates, but they just aren't as refined or as nice as something that Shadow Systems uses or what SIG does. I'd be perfectly fine if they said that this would only fit RMR cut sights. That'd be fine. And then they just put the rear sight on, on the back. Now the Mete series they've come out with, they are different. They have improved that. However, this one, not a big fan of. But between the Canic 
and the shadow systems, they both have a really, really nice serration set on the pistols themselves. Very, very easy to get a good purchase on them. It is better than SIG pretty considerably, whether it be across the tops of them or also along the sides, easy to get your press checks in and everything like that. If we're talking about triggers, the Canic hands down has the best trigger of the two. If you're going between the Shadow Systems and the Legion, these two pistols trigger wise, it's kind of really down to personal preference. I do prefer the trigger on the Shadow Systems myself. However, the trigger on the 320 series pistols is still very good. It has a good pull weight. It breaks somewhat spongy, which is really probably what I don't like about them the most. However, the reset and everything like that is pretty good. And ultimately, the pull weight on it is very manageable. Sighting systems on here, if you're going strictly with your iron sights, I probably prefer, whether it be the, the X5 here or your Canic, the sighting system is probably preferable to competition shooting as opposed to the green or neon front sight that is used on the shadow systems. The shadow system is more utilitarian in that sight platform. However, it's still good. It's just not quite competition focused like the other two are. How the pistols shoot, okay? Without a doubt, the Canic is the snappiest of the bunch. That's probably just due to it does have a higher bore axis. A lot of people like to talk about bore axis and say it doesn't necessarily mean that much, but it does. You can feel recoil quite a bit more on the Canic than you can the Shadow Systems, and obviously as you can on the Legion. Now the Shadow Systems and the Legion, they both absorb and mitigate recoil very, very well. The Legion does it by using the heavy grip pistol and module and everything like that. I don't have any issues with that competition wise. It feels good. It really feels nice when you're shooting. It feels really, really solid. The Shadow System sits very low in your hand. It's very easy to absorb recoil with the grip texture that they use on here, which is the best out of the three of them. And the grip module itself does have shells built into it, which is very nice for putting your, your support hand thumb on there. Now, this Legion in particular, you see I have a different takedown lever on there, which I'm probably indifferent on if I like that one, that gas pedal, but the Shadow Systems itself comes with a very nice one in general. Overall build quality. All three of them are built really well. They all came, come from reputable manufacturers. I know there's some people out there right now that are concerned with their, their 320s going off when they're not supposed to. I'm not one of those people. I carry one for duty use. I don't see any issues with them. And some of the things that I've read behind that, I don't necessarily agree with, however, I'm not those people to that occur with. All three of these pistols, I like shooting a lot. That Canic, again, I will reiterate this. This is the best value out of the three of these pistols, without a doubt. They come with two nice magazines, they come in a nice case with clean materials and everything you would need, but they do suffer from a crappy sight plate system on them. In addition to that, a little bit of a high bore axis. The SIG shoots really, really flat. It's been proven in competition use. It's used by a ton of competitors, and it's very, very easy to shoot and mitigate Roco with due to the weight of it. However, the Magwell system interface with their mag base pads is not good. Okay, again, I don't really know who came up with that idea. The Shadow Systems pistol is probably a little bit on the expensive side compared to the rest of these. However, it feels really good in your hand. It mitigates Roco well. If you're a Glock fan, there's no reason to go out and buy a Glock 34 instead of this pistol. This is what you want if you want to go get a Glock 34 pattern type pistol. Guys, I hope going over these pistols, some of the negatives that are behind each one of them, they all have them. At, at the end of the day, you could get any three of these pistols and be very, very happy with them for whatever honestly you use them with. If it's duty use, so be it. If it's competition use, these ones will all treat you well if you're looking for a striker fire pistol. So I hope this review helps you out to determine which one of these three popular pistols works best for you. But if it doesn't, drop us a comment, ask us a question, we'd be happy to help you.